Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Management Studies, SOMS, Certificate Programs, Certificate in NGO Management, CNM, BMS 001 Introduction to NGO Management, Block 1 Concepts and Functions of NGOs, Unit 1 NGO, An Introduction. 1.1 Introduction Over 1 million NGOs are working in India, and whether you work in one or not you will be meeting up NGOs. This unit will help you to understand the NGO or non-government organization environment and see how important their role is in our democratic society. You will also be introduced to some key issues and concepts that are essential to the nature and functions of the NGOs. Although community and charity services have been offered as far we know society in its present form has existed, the whole NGO phenomenon is a recent development. There are some distinct features that make them what they are. We will study some of these features that give the foundation and impetus to the NGO. ODM Oni Biosil 1. Point to what is an NGO If you are not part of an NGO already, you may have definitely met people the poor by offering educational or health services or even others giving ranking why underprivileged. These are most likely to be people who belong to an NGO. Can you think of some NGOs? Normally, they will be those taking up challenges that the government is not undertaking. They will be the ones providing services to the needy. For instance, you may have heard of NGOs who are meeting the needs of people suffering poor health undernourishment or have been hit by a natural disaster like a cyclone, drought or a tsunami. Not always will NGOs be involved in working with the downtrodden or underprivileged. Some are very highly trained and offering specialized services. Some may be working on more professional services providing health or educational services, economic upliftment through small loans and other entrepreneurial activities. But, what is an NGO? An NGO or a non-governmental organization is a private institution and as its name suggests, it is independent of the government. NGOs essentially are non-profit making and purely service-oriented organizations committed to the development and welfare of the community. Some NGOs may be a group of volunteers helping to sustain individuals or families while others may emphasize the empowerment of communities to bring about societal transformation or change. There are other terms such as community-based organizations, CBO, non-profit organizations, NPO, or voluntary organizations, VO, which are frequently used to describe such organizations. In fact, these terms describe their functions more directly than non-government. For instance, from these names you can see that they take up community projects, they are voluntary and hence do not work for profit. The NGO community is quite a creative community. You will therefore see plenty of creativity in the names used. Take for instance Dongo or Gongo. Dongo is donor-organized non-governmental organization and Gongo, government-organized non-governmental organization. In this course we will utilize the word non-government organization as this has become widely used in India. Whatever names you give to these organizations there are some elements that are common to their goal. One main element is that in principle they are not working for profit in a commercial sense nor are they necessarily working for high salaries or selfish agendas most times. Also NGOs will not be working for the benefit of a single individual family or a small group of individuals. They are normally concerned for the benefit of the whole community. That is why we see the words community, non-profit and voluntary in the terms used to describe such organizations. 1.3 Definition You are now ready to define an NGO and so let us make a start by looking at some definitions. The World Bank defines NGOs as Private organizations that pursue activities to relieve suffering, promote the interests of the poor, protect the environment, provide basic social services, or undertake community development. UN Definition A non-governmental organization, NGO, is any non-profit, 
voluntary citizens group which is organized on a local, national or international level. Task-oriented and driven by people with a common interest, NGOs perform a variety of service and humanitarian functions, bring citizen concerns to governments, advocate and monitor policies, and encourage political participation through provision of information. Some are organized around specific issues, such as human rights, environment, or health. They provide analysis and expertise, serve as early warning mechanisms, and help monitor and implement international agreements. Their relationship with offices and agencies of the United Nations system differs depending on their goals, their venue, and the mandate of a particular institution. In India, the voluntary sector or non-profit sector is an all-embracing term that can include organizations, societies, associations, trusts and companies registered under various acts such as the Societies Registration Act and the Indian Trusts Act. The new Government of India Planning Commission Policy, 2007, defines them as organizations engaged in public service based on ethical, cultural, social, economic, political, religious, spiritual, philanthropic or scientific and technological considerations. The policy specifies that NGOs should have the following characteristics. Medium black circle they are private, i.e. separate from government. Medium black circle they do not return profits generated to their owners or directors. Medium black circle they are self-governing, i.e. not controlled by government. They are registered organizations or informal groups with clearly defined aims and objectives. Therefore, you can now identify an NGO as a non-governmental organization, NGO, which is independent from government, non-profit, voluntary agency which is organized on a local, national or international level and undertaking a wide variety of services and humanitarian interventions for the benefit of citizens and their communities. Activity 1. There are various features that you may include in your definition or you may want to be more specific with reference to some activities that your own organization is conducting. Write your own definition of an NGO. According to Voluntary Action Network India, VANI, an apex body of Indian NGOs, the total number of NGOs in India is 1.2 million. Of these 53% is rural-based and the remaining 47% is urban-based. Interestingly, 49.8% of the total are unregistered organizations. Also, only 6.6% work in the health sector. 1.4. Does the government recognize NGOs? While we use the term non-government, we do not imply that there is no relationship whatsoever. For instance, to start with, an NGO must be a registered body registered through the right government agencies in a particular state. They will be therefore under some restrictions from the government and you will read more about this in the other units of this course. In order to fully understand the relationship of the NGO and the government some historical background will be helpful. Although voluntary organizations have been working for centuries, the phrase non-governmental organization only came into popular use with the establishment of the United Nations Organization in 1945. Soon governments began to recognize the role played by such bodies in fulfilling the tasks that they were not able to accomplish. India has a rich tradition of social service and voluntary agencies. After our country's independence, Mahatma Gandhi was known for his service activities and even called for dissolving the Indian National Congress, the political party which came into power upon independence, and transforming it into a Lok Sevak Sangh, public service organization. Although this was rejected, many Gandhians established voluntary agencies to work closely with the governmental programs on social and economical issues. These agencies organized handicrafts and village industries, rural development programs, credit cooperatives, educational institutions, etc. It was only around 1980 that the Indian government began to define the role of voluntary agencies and to recognize their importance. The Sixth Five-Year Plan, 1980-1985, to 1985, 
identified new areas in which NGOs as new actors could participate in development. These areas included Optimal utilization and development of renewable source of energy, including forestry through the formation of Renewable Energy Association at the block level. Family welfare, health and nutrition, education and relevant community programs in the field. Health for all programs. Water management and soil conservation. Social welfare programs for weaker sections. Implementation of minimum needs program. Disaster preparedness and management, i.e. For floods, cyclones, etc. Promotion of ecology and tribal development and environmental protection and education. This was followed by much more attention to NGOs. Under the seventh five-year plan, 1985 to 1990, the Indian government provided for a more active role for voluntary organizations. NGOs were called to lead rural areas in their self-reliance how village and indigenous resources could be used and how human resources, rural skills and local knowledge grossly underutilized at present could be used for their own development. NGOs because of their situation and interaction with local people can be very effective in bringing change since they are able to address issues that governments are often not able to comprehend. That is, because these organizations work at the grassroots level they are able to sense the urgency of issues and prioritize into the problem-solving mode at a quicker pace. Plus, smother the 2300. This advantage has also been noticed by the Indian government. In the Lie Dive Year Plan the importance of NGOs is further enhanced, paying particular attention to the role of these agencies as participants in rural appraisal for drawing up development plans at a very low cost and involving the rural community the plan document states, a nationwide network of NGOs will be created. In order to facilitate the working of this network, three schemes relating to the creation, replication, multiplication and consultancy. Development have been worked out by the Planning Commission. Today, India has a vigorous NGO sector. Although there has been no complete census of NGOs, it is estimated that about 25,000 to 30,000 are active in India. In fact, as of 31st December 1989, there were 12,313 NGOs registered with the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India under the Foreign Contribution Regulation. Act, FCRA, 1976. Furthermore, 726 NGOs are unregistered but under the prior permission category. One problem with NGOs in India, as with NGOs anywhere else in the world, has been the increasing dependency on governmental funds or donations from external, foreign, donors like the World Bank. This dependent relationship has resulted in a lack of flexibility on the part of NGOs to pick their missions and objectives since many are expected to perform certain tasks in return for funding. But, further still, it has also created structures that have become more bureaucratic in nature and, hence, less effective in development. Nevertheless, NGOs are here to stay and will continue to work in India on political, economical, or social issues. The task before them is how they will manage to produce change will keep track for governmental documentation. Almost all government ministries will have certain funds allocated for NGOs demonstrating their acceptance as well as dependence on NGOs to fulfill common missions. NGOs are encouraged with fairly substantial grants for their activities. Council for Advancement of People's Action and Rural Technology Kapart is an autonomous body within the Ministry of Rural Development. It is the single largest government agency supporting voluntary sector work for rural development. Several central and state government ministries and departments allocate funds for NGO projects. You can visit the relevant offices of these ministries for instance if you are dealing with health programs go to the Ministry of Health or visit their websites for further information. 1.5. Kinds of NGOs functioning in India There are various kinds of NGOs and it is difficult to categorize them systematically. 
Some are concerned with special services such as education or health, others offer special services such as advocacy or consultancy, while most operate on grassroots levels meeting various needs in the communities they choose to operate within. There are various ways in which you will find NGOs categorized, but here below are kinds of NGOs and their functions. Grassroots Organizations Many small NGOs work directly with the community on the grassroots levels. These could be dealing with education, health, mother and child issues, etc. There are many. Mahila Mandals, Balwadis, etc. that will be working in a small way and receiving funds from their activities from government sources or through other charities. Such organizations do not necessarily need to be operating in villages or slums, as some will be working in middle-class housing communities. Health and Education We will club these together, as most NGOs working in such fields of service will have areas of overlap. An educational NGO may be working in literacy, adult education, or even an entire school for the poor. They will have a wide range of activities, but will primarily be concerned to educate the masses to develop better attitudes and therefore better conditions for living. A health agency may be working in a rural area, but will use plenty of educational models to communicate basic health issues. Both education and health organizations are taking up AIDS and HIV projects as AIDS is not just a health problem, it is a social disease. Advocacy Advocacy is a term used to describe any organized activity on the behalf of an individual or the community especially the task of pleading or arguing for rights and privileges of the exploited or underprivileged. Such NGOs will speak out on issues of concern and may even conduct an intensive campaign to change laws or policies. The NGOs who work on advocacy or campaigning on issues or causes do not normally directly implement programs. They are a group of experts in their areas along with legal and communication skills. Consultancy Research Organizations With the increasing challenges being faced by NGOs through globalization on the one side and increasing local socio-political factors, there is need for advice from experts. Research and consultancy organizations will assist NGOs right from the setting up to the implementation levels and then offer assistance in evaluation. Some NGOs like to analyze their results using latest tools and these are useful in getting a picture of where we are in our progress. Training Capacity Building Organizations In the NGO sector, training is frequently being referred to as capacity building. But capacity building is much more than training and includes human resource development, organizational development, the streamlining of management structures, processes and procedures for better result-oriented performances, etc. For an NGO, in its broadest interpretation, capacity building looks at human resource development, HRD, as an essential part of development. Such functions are best performed by experts and some NGO organizations are offering such expertise. Religious NGOs In India, some of the earliest NGOs in the broad sense of the word were set up by Christian missionaries in the 1800s. They primarily took up educational and health projects such as schools and hospitals but also had some religious elements within their range of activities. Today Hindu and Muslim organizations are doing the same and many functioning successfully in amelioration of poverty and developing of communities. Large percentage of NGO funding from outside India goes to religious-based organizations. While some look positively at religion or faith-based organizations, others like the Bill Gates Foundation will not give money to any organization having a religious basis. A large number of NGOs in India have religious connections and operating effectively and efficiently. Here is the profile of a typical NGO. Note how clearly they articulate their mission and their activities in keeping with this mission. After carefully reading this, you can begin to discreet your own organization in a similar way. The various healthcare services activities supported by Smile on Children's Health cover the following. Health and Hygiene Awareness 
health checkup including dental health curative treatment including referral immunization adolescent health education and counseling pediatric and surgery camps as we have attempted to define ngos and identify some of the types of ngos you are now able to underline some characteristic features of ngos one of the most common goals of ngos will be their commitment helping people and benefiting society in all they provide services that include community mobilization for health education and environmental services support services of various kinds and even small scale financial intermediation for the economic upliftment 1.6 working of ngos ngos demonstrate a sense of commitment most ngos have started by a commitment of an individual or a group concerned to demonstrate this in action many times they are not experts but have a heart for helping For instance Cry was founded by a 25 year airline purser and his seven friends with only hours 50 and a dining table they chose not to be a grassroots level implementing organization working directly with children instead cry became a link between individuals who could provide resources on the one hand and the field workers who were struggling to function for lack of funding They identify people with similar commitment and strengthen their hands to accomplish tasks. You will see a commitment here that starts small and will soon find all else that is required to function effectively. NGOs primarily work with the poor. There is wide recognition by governments and corporate bodies that NGOs have a significant role to play in working with the poor. With recent experiences they know that this is not just through giving aid but in assisting the poor to break out of their condition of poverty. The term empowerment of the poor is commonly utilized to describe the key to the transformation of the livelihood of these groups. We will study this concept later. NGOs are able to reach remote areas of need. NGOs are often able to reach sections of rural populations that governments either neglect or do not target as a priority. Sadly, sometimes government agencies will claim to have conducted programs in such remote areas, but there is little to prove it. It is their commitment that takes them into remote rural areas to identify the poorest segments of communities, identifying those who face acute poverty. NGOs possess first-hand knowledge of local conditions. Most NGOs, being grassroots level operations, make efforts to know as much as possible about the local people and their conditions. This is not just the socio-economic and environmental conditions of the area but also the attitudes of the local people. They will also have some inside unwritten accounts of the experiences of the individuals, their families and the whole community. It is for this reason that the Jawaharlal Urban Renewal Mission providing funds for state governments to engage in slum clearances are advising the involvement of NGOs as they know the local conditions. NGOs from the target area can help provide baseline date and all kinds of information to help give a good start to a project and avoid any major obstacles to development. NGOs are recognized for their innovative initiatives. Most NGOs will take pride in the fact that they have innovative programs to tackle development problems and issues. While most times this may not be completely true, NGOs have provided many novel ideas and models adapted in other settings and situations. Unlike routine government procedures and processes, NGOs with their fairly flexible organizational structure are able to experiment with new approaches that add value to projects. For instance, the integrated farming concept which started by an NGO in the Philippines has gradually moved all over. Rather than having just a fish pond, the group designed an integrated approach where vegetation, goats, ducks, fish etc were all grown and integrated with one another. The greenery gave food to the goats, their dung provided manure, the goats freely roamed around and swam in the ponds. Their excreta provided feed for the fish and overall an innovative model was successfully demonstrated. NGOs depend on donors for their funding. 
Most NGOs will depend on donors unless they have been set up by their own founders' fund provisions. Some large companies are setting up their own NGO operations by channeling their corporate social responsibility funds. These are funds that the company sets aside in a show of commitment to the community. However, by and large, NGOs will seek various sources, including government grants to obtain their funding. These could be individuals, groups, national and international service agencies, business houses, or charitable trusts specially set up to give donations. Activity 2 Write a brief note on the features of an NGO, listing some of the features above, and adding others from your own experience. Asian Development Bank, ADB on the characteristics of NGOs while developmental NGOs vary greatly in size and orientation, most share the common goal of helping people and benefiting society. International and national NGOs support larger-scale activities ranging from social welfare to environmental and political advocacy. NGOs at the local level provide services that include community organization, health education, welfare support, small-scale financial intermediation and environmental protection. NGOs also help improve people's lives through skills training and other livelihood programs. NGOs prepare and implement development projects and work to strengthen local institutional capabilities and promote community self-reliance. NGO funding comes through donations, government assistance and a variety of other sources. NGOs make significant contributions to socio-economic development. Often they enjoy advantages over government and private sector institutions and can deliver services to hard-to-reach communities in a more efficient, cost-effective manner. Much of the success of NGOs comes from dynamic leadership and committed staff. NGOs usually are more flexible and innovative and are affected less by bureaucratic constraints. NGOs also have limitations. Many NGOs are small in both size and scope of operations and their impact sometimes is limited. NGOs can suffer from financial and technical constraints. Often focused on a specific concern or a specific location, NGOs may lack a broader economic and social perspective. Many smaller NGOs are loosely structured and may have limited accountability. Management and planning may be weak or too flexible. 1.7 Summary We often come across the word NGOs. These are organizations which take initiatives and challenges which otherwise are left unattended. Basically these are the organizations which provide services to the needy. In this unit an effort has been made to give a theoretical base to what is an NGO. It also emphasizes on the relationship of NGOs with the government. Overall, this unit gives a brief overview about NGOs. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.